Hi, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the second session of Panjara Coffee, where we are going to talk today with Dan Antarik from Delhi. Uh, it's uh, for the uninitiated, it's the psychedelic Delhi Rock Band. We are making waves in the Delhi Rock Cafe today. Uh, and we are here to talk to them about their first stuff. And somebody just dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind repeating the first one? I think I got this. The first one is where we talk about your band, your sound, okay. and then the story. Okay. Chief. Cool. So let's start. Uh, you guys can tip in whoever wants to answer. You guys can want to tip in. Uh, the first question: Give us a quick story about Andre. How did it all start? How did it all start? Did you want to take that one? You <laughs> know, you go ahead. Acha. <laughs> So I think yeah, uh, like uh, we've all known each other for a long time. Nidhar and I used to play in the same band, Feedback, and uh, GT used to play for Prestorica, and uh, we've kind of been fans of similar uh, styles of music. Uh, post our Feedback days, like both Nidhar and I started working. GT was already working, uh, and in a year or two, we realized like uh, this, this this is definitely not something that's meant for us. And we were desperately trying to get back, uh, do some music, and try out some different things. Uh, and so it happened that Mridul, uh, who's working in Boston, uh, actually had plans to come down to Delhi at the same time I was planning to quit my job. Uh, and that's when we thought, like, okay, so uh, let's try something out. Maybe it can work. We didn't know, like, if we'll actually end up doing it or not. So even before anything started, like uh, middle landed, and like a couple of days later, GT, I and middle were jamming at my place, trying to write a uh, few songs. Uh, for a couple of months, it just went on like that. We made like three, four originals before we before we even uh, actually uh, had like gave the band a name or started taking it seriously. So I think broadly that's how it started. But once we knew that okay, now we are actually doing it. Uh, so Dhiri Dhiri happened to be the first one. With Song that we actually went ahead and recorded, made a video. And how many people were there? Back then, it was only three of us. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, GTI and Nilo were there. We did all the stuff, uh, got the video done. And I think that's when we realized that uh, there's something actually uh, that can happen with this. Like uh, we didn't expect that sort of response that we got because, again, uh, we've been like fans of progressive music and. Uh, as for us, the music was still the kind of music we wanted to make, but just the language being Hindi, uh, we realized that it was actually uh, pretty accessible for the audience, uh, well accessible, and people were liking it. So even the like music, like good music listeners, as well as the like common people, who would just like to hear uh, any sort of stuff. So, so basically, uh, that's when sound, uh, progressive is something that you like, and Hindi is what people like. Uh, you could say that. You could say that. Like Hindi just makes you reach out to a wider audience, and of course, in the last four or five years, what we've seen is like uh, there's lots of rock influence. We can see even Bollywood stuff and Coke Studio and all of that coming up. Uh, this sort of music, uh, essentially rock and you know, different genres around it, started to become more acceptable. Uh, so we wanted to explore this thing and see that uh, 
if we try and uh, keep doing like do the music we want to do at the same time like try it out in hindi and see so this is the first time you are coming into the hindi picture right because uh, all your feedback and under siege everything was uh, totally english absolutely absolutely is it the same for everyone sorry i think it's the same for everyone yeah okay so gt was been sorry a big bold step then uh you could say that <laughs> Actually, I mean, uh, to be honest, uh, when we guys met initially, me and Varun, and uh, when Middle also came with the picture, we guys did a lot of thought, you know, thought about what kind of music we want to play, and uh, definitely, I think we all three were aligned after a couple of discussions that we want to try out the Hindi route, uh, still keeping the essence of the music the same, the genre pretty much the same, and the kind of music we want to make. So, a clear consideration was that we're not going to compromise on the type of music we want to do. and uh, and at the same time take that challenge to reach out to the masses and you know get the message out there so i think with dheere dheere that message was pretty good uh, very well conveyed to the audience because if you look at the video it's it doesn't have a story line it's just three of us dancing it's very well shot and very well featured but yeah i mean uh, still the music is what connects everybody i guess uh, people like seem to connect to it very well okay back then you didn't have any drummer right Oh really? 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 I think if I remember correctly, the video uh, it doesn't have a drum. It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. Yes. I think that's good uh, traction on YouTube. Yeah. Sorry. It's still making such good traction on YouTube. So it's great. Yeah, we were actually skeptical, and I always was wondering that we don't have a drummer in there. Like the music critics are gonna see it like a bit drummer here, this player not here. What's it gonna be like? But like. Uh, to my surprise, none of those questions were raised. Okay. Uh, which I and then find your. How did you find your drummer? Yeah, you we found your drummer. He's made the Tommy Jams logo, and <laughs> we found. <laughs> how did you find him? So I actually uh, this uh, I don't know. I, you might be knowing this guy called Hem Chander. So I used to teach. Yeah, him, yeah. Teach him. He's also from the same college. He's on. Yeah, like one year junior. I used to teach him uh, guitars during college days, and he was actually playing with Ripple in a band. Okay. So he actually told me a couple of times, "Try out Ripple." We were like, "Yeah, but we are very short and thin." And so, and then like one fine day, we actually I just like called him up and he sent a video, and we're like, "Oh shit!" Like this guy can play stuff. He looks the oldest amongst all of us right now, but he's the youngest. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, on my screen on the left and the right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, like we just called Vipul and we jammed with him a couple of times and uh, like everything seemed to be going our way. We really liked him as a person, as a drummer. He was fantastic already. So I think Vipul uh, came as more of a blessing in disguise as well. So uh, yeah. for a band uh, to find a drummer, it's really difficult at times. And in fact, in fact, to find anybody, right? Uh, there are tons of guitarists out there. But I think where a band struggles is primarily on a bassist and a vocalist and a, uh, and a drummer. So I think uh, we we uh, we we tried out Ripple and I think it worked out fantastic. So it was pretty good. Ripple, guitars, we are the indispensable. Yeah, we are the indispensable ones. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Ripple, your words on the same. How did it feel like coming into yeah. this band? Are you performed for a lot of bands as a drummer, right? Yeah, I mean, so I was like. Uh, in what like three band before I joined Arthur, yeah. so you know like it was like a very big decision for me to like come and play with these guys. I mean you can't just manage each and every band you know and give them like the same priority as such. So uh, what happened was like I I contacted Varun, so we set up a jam and all, and you know we just we just we just we just jammed on Vijay Vijay, you know back then, and I mean these guys seemed to like me. So I was like, okay, why don't we I give give it a shot and you know, like, go ahead with it. Yeah. And what happened to the re rest of the three bands? I unfortunately had to leave. <laughs> <laughs> <Very good. laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. you know that that shows the kind of commend commendable commitment that he has to this yeah. band. <laughs> <laughs> to this band, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which was also a fact. Like like uh, two three jams later, we were just starting. I was like, so. Initially, he'd come for the jam. He'd be like, "Yeah, I'm going for this next jam and the next jam." Like three jams later, he was like, "Okay, I actually could do that." Okay, sahi okay. hai. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I think it it was yeah. Very good. So I think all the 
uh, all the four of you are full time musicians, but uh, Vipul is still studying. So how does that work out? Uh, so Vipul is studying, but uh, we don't see that as a bottleneck at all. Like, uh, yeah, and he's still making a lot of. Uh, he's still doing a lot of design work during his exams these days. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> and GT is actually working. Yeah, so, uh, oh, I'm still working. I. I currently work with a uh, IT firm so I mean it's all about finding time right so if, if it's your passion and and you want to really do it then you will try and find a time for it and I think it's about also meeting the right kind of individuals the right mindset of people so when I met Middle and Varun uh, we, we had a common understanding that yeah I mean I would have the time that I can devote alongside my usual day to day work but yeah we, we can make the most of what we have so that's that's the best thing that has come out so far so it's going pretty steady so far no but when it comes to the dates and all when you have to perform and something and uh, do you always find time off your uh, job or does it become a pain uh it's it's not always that easy and it's not always that difficult uh, the firm that i work with is pretty comfortable for me to do uh, alternate shifts and work from home policies and all that stuff so i'm able to find time and if you look at gigs, they usually do happen during the evenings. Uh, you'll have sound checks around four or five in the evening. So getting there has not been an issue so far. Uh, once we start gigging our stations, I think then then the real channel will be met. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and once you guys get us a tour, we'll make you quit this job. We <laughs> hope to see you soon. <laughs> okay. So uh, one last question regarding the band. So. Uh, what lies ahead for you guys? What is next? Uh, so as of now, we're actually uh, spending most of our time uh, in the studio. Uh, we're trying to wrap up the recording of our debut album in about by the end of uh, I'd say May and at max like sometime in June. <clears throat> so that's the immediate target. What we realize is that. Uh, we're a band like we we're really focus a lot on jamming and coming up with a lot of new stuff, uh, new, new songs. So, and like uh, to our surprise, we've actually come up with about 10, 11 songs over the last uh, I'd say four months, which we feel is an achievement. And uh, the idea is to actually just uh, get them all on the record, get them all on the album, and do a complete uh, album promotion tour and all of that. And like, then follow it up, double it up with the gigs so that uh, when we go out and play, we can you know, send out stuff and people sort of know us that, you know, where we're coming from. We already have an album now. So the idea is to, uh, since we've always, all of us have actually played in different bands for a considerable period of time, we don't want to start at step one, we want to start somewhere in the middle. So, which makes the album a lot more important. Yeah. That's the idea. That's the idea. Okay, so I think it's time that we move into the next session and maybe we can also come back in the have time there. Uh, so the next session, what we are going to do is a rapid fire thing. Uh, we want two volunteers out of these three guys. We'll have GT and Ripple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been speaking too much. Okay. <laughs> so GT, you go first, okay? Okay. Uh, so, five questions, quick answers, okay? Quick quick answers, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, question one, working on your music or marketing the band? Working on the music. Favorite food? Sorry? Favorite food? Favorite food? Uh, chicken, definitely. <laughs> Dream guitar? Ibanez, Steve Vai series. Justin Bieber or Rebecca Black? None of the above. <laughs> Bicycle or scooty? Bicycle. Oh. So those are your five questions. And now we are going to fit this to Ripple. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ripple, here you go. Favorite biography? Richard Branson, I guess. Uh, your guitarist just messed up his lead on a big show. What do you do? I, I don't care, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A.R. Rahman or Roger Waters? 
Roger Water is. Early morning Riyaz or bathroom singing? <laughs> bathroom singing. <laughs> Dream Marina. Uh, I don't know. I'm probably one of the amphitheaters in you know. Alright. Alright. Great. So good this fun to some guys. Uh alright. Time to go into the last section and maybe we can always jump back to the first one. Uh so as I told you, we have a lot of movies in this. Uh, so the first tip, uh, first question that we think any musician will have for you guys is, uh, what are the three things that you look for when you are choosing band members? Because you guys started with a initial set, then you got into some more band members. So what are the three things that you look for? Um, I think, of course, uh, some level of skill is definitely required uh, to play in like. So the kind of setup, the kind of stuff we are doing, so definitely that. Second, I think what I, uh, initially when we were trying to get Vipul and Raghav, the bass player on board, so uh, I've been in bands before which actually struggled because uh, the band members were not able to devote enough time to the band. So that was one of the biggest criteria of having people, like, people who can actually put in a, like, the time required for the band, come for the jams, play the gigs, do all the marketing and you know they like, contribute in every possible way that the band needs to grow. Third, of course, like it has to be a nice person before like, this has to be the first. Yeah, the chemistry part, right? The chemistry you have to get course. together. Of yeah. course, yeah. that that's what actually lasts. So, yeah. Any of the other guys want to add something? Sorry, you want me to add something? Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think the uh, I agree to all the three points he said. On top of that, uh, I think having a common vision is also important, right? So, uh, what do you want to do in music? Or what do you want to? Where do you where do you see your band going? Where, how much do you think it will become? How much you want it to become? I think also very important. Yeah. Alright. Uh, the second question is: uh, We all know that uh, Antrik is very careful about their brand image as well as band in it. So, <laughs> we want to know from you, what are the three steps that you can do to create a good band image out there? Uh, I think there's uh, no substitute for good music. So, the first thing is obviously like we want to keep making um, like awesome music you know, as good as we can and the kind of music we like. I'm sure like, there's no substitute there, right? Uh, step two would be uh, like you know, no matter how good the music is, if it actually does not reach out to people, it's of no use. So you really want to market your music well. You really want to position your band well to the audience. Well. So and which requires all your like, social media marketing and all of that, online offline marketing. So we actually are trying to do that better, and we want to be able to do that better in the next two three months. That's the target right now. Uh, anyway, guys, people, people, people I, this one. <laughs> I guess it also depends on, uh, you know, like how you how you present yourself to the social media these days, like the social social networks as well. Because I mean, a lot of bands would try to reach out. Because I mean, the best way to reach out to people is through Facebook as such and Twitter and all those services, right? So you need to be like able to connect with the people. I mean, with the right stuff, you need to post the right stuff. You know, the people are actually like going to give you know like a look towards that post itself. So you mean to say you should have a designer on board? <laughs> <laughs> you definitely need one. You definitely need one. Trust me. I think it helps. Yeah, yeah, we need one. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so we're actually pretty lucky. We have to. So GP and Google both are pretty good at design. Who makes the comic books on your Facebook page? <laughs> that was very <beautiful. laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> so, is, are there different weird styles like on purpose or just by accident? Mm -hmm. Varun is like, okay, I, I understand this is the same and probably will remain for life. What about the rest of you? Uh, for me also, it's been pretty much the same. Uh, I was actually just uh, before I got into 
got my hair cut down in 2005. So, uh, post that, it's always been this. I look, I look too cheesy in other hair beards. <laughs> <laughs> If Lou uh, keeps changing, he keeps transforming, he's like uh, maybe the next Transformers movie or something. <laughs> that was a bad one, JQ, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so right now you can see him in his exam mode. Yeah. So I, 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 guess, I guess one more thing that connects us all is probably having these beards. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> probably not an important thing, but yeah. You know, so he, the that there should be a good balance between the, the amount on, uh, on the amount of hair on your face. So he puts <laughs> some hair from his head to his beard sometimes and vice versa. <laughs> I, I am coming in next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You're probably going to be a good margin. <laughs> All, right. All right. So I think we are through with the interview today. I have one question. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. Here. <laughs> so uh, one big question is that all of us, I think uh, everyone here is uh, has had parallel options of pursuing jobs and everything, right? But if all of us have landed into music at the end of the day, having options uh, parallelly as well. So how do it feel like as in at, at this middle age, middle twenties age or like Vipul is an exception or whatever, but like in this kind of an age, you suddenly leave everything and follow music, uh, why? Uh, I think because the passion for music is, well, like personally speaking, the passion for music has been probably a lot more than anything else. Uh, so that's what actually brought me back here. I'm still testing the water, so we're trying to see what it means to be doing music. And do you think that uh, pursuing this kind of thing uh, for people like us is an advantage like do you do you feel that edge uh, in terms of technology or whatever you does it serve as an advantage to you as a band uh, who's technologically sound or like aptitude wise something uh, having parallel options as well I would say in some ways yes in some ways actually not um, you probably do have a few advantages like you know you, you find people like us being a little, lot more sincere to what we do but at the same time, there, uh, there are a certain set of skills which you require in, in being in this industry, which I feel like people are, people like us sort of lack because of the background that we have. So, uh, yeah, I'd say there's like only a slight advantage. Yeah. Is it and, can you hear us? Sorry. Yeah, I, yeah. Can, I can hear you guys. Can you oh, guys hear me? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, great. No, no. Yo, finally, I'm sorry I'm late. So, okay, no issues. Uh, but uh, okay, Mrithul, to you. Uh, leaving Boston and McKinsey, coming back to Delhi and doing music full time. How does it feel? Scary. Test to us. Worth the risk or still to find out? Uh, in due time. In due time. It's definitely it's tons of uh, fun writing. I think uh, it's been it's been a fan, I, like. To be honest with you, before every time like I've personally written, it's been, you know, you have these ideas floating around that have come over like two years, three years of time, right? Now you actually have pressure and, you know, you need to come on, you need to actually produce some output. So yeah. it's, it's different, but it's, uh, I think actually getting uh, songs written, uh, it, it's gratifying definitely. So to, to the youngsters, any one of you, right, uh, to youngsters who, I'm sure a lot of people have this dilemma in their mind to really sh shift or not. You, you have a lot of uh, options like GT is pursuing it parallelly. You have Bridul leaving, changing the continent and then coming back. You have Arun uh, slowly developing and then leaving. And you have people studying and giving it, right? So uh, to people who are in this kind of a dilemma, what do you say? Go for it, uh, take your time, uh, study the market and then go into it, what? So I'm I'm happy to chime in. Uh, my so <laughs> I'm actually happy to say what I've I've done right, which is I'm happy that I have good backing, right? I think I've I've kind of walked the path for a while, which basically gives at some level gives me the liberty to do this, right? Uh, which I think is valuable. So I think uh, you know don't so don't think of one one thing is bad and the other thing is good i think 
if you're doing something that's corporate now and you're having a good time doing it, do it. But at some point, if you feel that you want to take it, you know, there's there's no harm in trying it out. You can always go back. Uh, so I'd say just, you know, if you have, if you've ever wanted to do something, take some time out, do it, see if it works, if it doesn't work, you know. If it doesn't work, so be it. Because often the chances with things like this is you go, you try it, it you know, it's not as rosy as it, you know, you thought it would be. And trust me, I've met many people who left their jobs to do different things who have found that out, right? Hey, you know, shit, I thought this would be so cool, but it's shit. Uh, be open to that yeah. and uh, you know, just enjoy what you do, I guess. So at the angle of somebody who's working and trying to do something like like the way I'm doing it, I think uh, what I've learned in the past six, seven years that I've been working is that uh, your work life is, is, if you look at the specifically, if you look at the IT industry, right, it's it's very strenuous. It's, it's got a lot of stress. You've got late working hours, you've got pressure, you've got a lot of work to do. Uh, so that's pretty much been constant. So I think it's all about finding that one thing uh, outside that area which gives you that happiness, which gives you that will to wake up the next morning and carry on, right? So for me, it's definitely music. and. Uh, I quit Historica in somewhere around 2006, and uh, Unthrix just happened like five years later or so. So in that five years, I was doing my own personal music and all that stuff, but music never stepped out. But that whole feel of being in a band, that high of being on a stage and rocking it out with five or six friends, is something which I always long for. And I think it's come back, and it's 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 been amazing so far. So that's the feel. That's the message that I would like to give. Anyone else? Varun, Vibul? I don't know, man. I'm a young, I'm a youngster myself, so I am <laughs> learning. Well, I'm learning. Study computer science and play music, that's it. <laughs> Just don't study anything, man. <laughs> Varun? Yeah, no, I actually feel the same thing. Uh, like, uh, in a very similar path, right? Uh, I didn't have the courage to do this right after college. Uh, like, but spending two, three years trying to work, you know, working for this, realizing what that side of the world is like. Uh, I always felt like this is a um, sort of an hour never opportunity. And uh, it's worth like going out and trying. It out. Like, if you can't uh, be like working at your desk and uh, whatever job you're doing and say that you know, music is good or bad, but at the same time, you can't. Be not in music and decide, you know, like be in music and decide like, the other side is good or bad. Yeah. You have to experience it to be able to tell it. True. Sure. That's what's happening right now. Yeah, that's, what, that's the kind of message that I think all of us are giving out. Unless you try it, you'll never find out what it's worth, right? So give it a shot and I'm sure it'll work out nicely. So that's, that's the message. Okay. So one last question to end this all. I am going to ask each one of you this question. Uh, if you have to devise a tagline for Anthrax right now, what will it be? Okay, so we start from first of all GT. I'm sorry, you were starting with who? GT. 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 From the left to the right. I couldn't get the question exactly. One tagline for Anthrax right now. One tagline for Anthrax. Okay. Um, Find yourself, perhaps. Cool. Middle. No boundaries. Varun? I'd say thoughtful music. Ripple. Grow a beard and rock it up. That's a better answer. I thought you would say Ripple. Nah. Ripple, you actually had the most time to think of a profound answer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I thought you would say blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Anyone else want to say, pitch in anything uh, which we haven't covered? Uh, you want to say something about Antariksh? We know your album is coming up. We'll be promoting the same. We hope it does great. Uh, anything else you want to chip in for from the band side? So, I mean, uh, 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 we all would like to personally thank you guys for you know, giving us this opportunity. I think it's great. And uh, I think we covered everything, unless anybody else wants to. Thank you guys so much. Uh, thanks for like featuring us in whatever way you're able to help us out and get us more gigs. That's awesome. All right, so I will just end the broadcast now. Uh